Hey there. Uh, one of the questions I get a lot of times being an electric car guy is what happens when the power goes out? Well, we're in Marin County right now and because of heightened wildfires, PG&E has actually shut off our power for about five days is what they're telling us. And San Francisco still has power. So I wanted to show you how we're actually using our 17 year old car. This car has 155,000 miles on it to actually power our house. Um, it's a pretty basic setup. It's not a car that was made for vehicle to grid technology, but it works for us. I'll let me show you how we do it. So at the heart of everything is a 3000 watt inverter, uh, which will power the house, but it will drain the battery very, very quickly. It runs off a 12 volt battery. And if we were just doing it off of a 12 volt battery by itself, it would deplete itself fairly quickly. So this inverter is being used just in place of like a generator that you would use. Um, I prefer doing it this way with an electric car because generators make a lot of noise. You have them running all night long. Uh, the electric car, while it makes a little bit of noise, doesn't make a lot of noise. So I can actually sleep with that. So the key is, is that we have this battery over here. I have a bunch of them to choose from. And I also have this auxiliary battery here, which is providing the 12 volts for the inverter. Well, the good news on an electric car is we have a huge capacity uh, battery, the traction battery, which is actually located underneath the car, which is continually charging the auxiliary battery. Now, normally on a car, you would do this with an alternator, but the car obviously has to be running. But in an electric car, this huge battery is actually charging this battery. So that's why I leave the car on, and it's actually continually keeping this battery charged. Um, you can see right now it's at 13.3 volts. And I have this meter on it just to monitor and make sure that this isn't depleting, this battery isn't getting depleted. If this battery gets depleted, I can't start the car without a jump. But um, that's basically it. Now the key with this is that you can only the DC to DC converter, which converts the like the 300 volts DC of the traction battery to the 12 volts for this battery, can really only do about 250 watts. So you have to be very judicious about what you actually run in your house. Um, if you run too many things, go over that 250 watts, um, everything will still continue to run subject to the limitation of the 3000 watt inverter, but you're going to start basically emptying out the bucket faster than it can be refilled from the DC to DC converter on the car. So, um, you know, basically we've taken measures in the house of like LED lights everywhere and I've taped off anything that produces heat, you know, uh, basically to make everything as streamlined as possible. Only the essential items are being run. So you can see we have lights in the kitchen. Uh, but big things like the big refrigerator, dishwasher, obviously the oven can't be used. This little toaster oven here can't be used, but we do have a gas stove so we can still cook there. So what we have is a small refrigerator. So we can run the small refrigerator off the inverter and which is powered from the car. Okay, so throughout the house, um, I have taped off anything that shouldn't be used for like in example in this case you know it's a fan fan takes a lot more energy than just a light um, all of our lights in the house are all led lights so they really don't use that much uh, current so but we just try to keep them off as much as possible but what's useful is is you can charge charge you know your devices things like that um, cell phones, we have internet, uh, as long as we have power and as long as our ISP has power, um, the internet still works. So that's about it. Um, you know, once again, it's very fairly limited. Um, now there's a lot of talk about vehicle to grid technology and what that would entail is actually having a much larger uh, DC to DC converter which would take like the 300 volts of the traction battery and convert it, um, well, probably just directly into 120 volts AC or somehow of tying into the grid. Most vehicles don't have that capability yet, but um, it's coming. So in a power 
outage, you can just use your car and you can basically, you'll be able to tell your car, this is how many miles I need to go to the nearest charging station and it will preserve that much, uh, you know, uh, capacity in the battery in order for you to get to your destination and charge. In this particular case, I am going to be um, driving to work tomorrow. San Francisco still has power, so I'll charge up the car when I'm in San Francisco, and then I come back and I can actually then, you know, run through the night with my car. Um, so that's one of the big advantages of electric cars. A lot of people think, well, if you have an electric car and you can't, the power's out and you can't charge it, what are you going to do? Um, but as long as the electric car has enough range, to get to some place with charging, you can actually use it to charge your house while um, the power is out. All right.